Hello, today I'd like to show you my Land Rover complete installation kit. Join me on this awesome, very British, with slightly German journey. So this is a 200 TDI Defender. This model's a 1988. Um, it's my own vehicle. I don't know if this was converted to 200 TDI, but either way, the earlier models, the 2.5 TDs, the petrols and the 200 TDIs, they all shared the same mounting pattern on the chassis, which is what the crate engine I've built and I'm gonna show you today suits. We have different engine mountings for different uh, chassis options, but this one's about the earlier, the 200 TDI, the 2.5 TD version. So let's have a look at it. Right, so we'll start down at the mounts that I've just described. So these mountings, uh, obviously, are designed to bolt to the 606 and allow it to sit directly onto the original chassis rubbers, which we've had great success with. Um, obviously, they come as a pair. They're electroplated. You bolt them on, job done. Obviously, this is a complete package that I've built for a customer. It's not often I have the time to build a complete engine for customers. Um, but on this occasion I did. Um, generally, we just sell this stuff as a package for you guys at home to bolt on yourself. I have a complete list for you to, uh, to go through. So um, what other bits have we got on? Well, this is a right hand drive one. So it's got the high mount alternator bracket, which you can see. We make those in house. There's a video all about that on, on YouTube. Um, with it being a Land Rover, it's also got the Land Rover air box. Now I'm gonna uh, just mention something actually here. Lots of customers ask me about bigger turbo setups and wanting to put all sorts of kind of power into their uh, Land Rovers. And, uh, and I have to often rein them back and say, look, if it's a right-hand drive, um, you're going to need a high-mount alternator bracket, which limits your ability to fit a giant turbo. Because, of course, the turbo would be mounted too far forward. You wouldn't have room for the air pipe. So what we always recommend the hybrid setup, which is good for 300 horsepower, which I will say is amazing in Land Rover, spools up real low down in the rev range and it, it goes all the way through. This hybrid has been designed to work with our Land Rover airbox and the alternator bracket. So those three things together give you a nice compact solution. And then the hose, the three inch flexible hose from there, straight to an air intake in the vent, in the wing, wherever. Uh, snorkel if you want to run one. So that's really nice. Now that, the turbo then leads us on to the next thing, which is the exhaust system. Now these are on the shelf exhaust systems um, that we supply three inch TIG welded stainless steel, high grade stainless. And this particular exhaust system is for a, the 200 TDI job that we've just described, or 2.5 TD, in a 110. So we don't have one for a 90. We don't have one for a 130, so don't ask. <laughs> well, you can ask. Um, but this is just specifically for a 110. So that obviously goes up and over the axle and it has a nice exit. Silencer in there, so that keeps things quiet. So next bit we're gonna go on to, which is important. Um, a lot of people say, building a Land Rover, what gearbox do I need to use? Whether it be a 200 or a 300 TDI that you're starting off with in a Defender, I always recommend the Stumpy. Now, you can convert your R380 to a Stumpy by changing the bell housing, or uh, you can buy a complete system from Ashcroft Transmission um, with upgraded bearings and things, which is what we do, and then we supply that to the customer, or the customer can buy it direct. Either way, it doesn't matter, but they're a good system and we like the use of them. Heavy duty release bearing. And that's all connected using our uh, complete Land Rover adapter kit. Now that there that you can see is a multiple piece kit that has adapter plate, steel flywheel, um, sax performance cover. That thing will not slip. If you like a lightweight clutch, I'd advise a clutch booster because these things are super strong, but I would much rather have to add a clutch booster than worry about a clutch ever slipping and I can guarantee that will never ever slip. The R380 Stumpy, just to give a little explanation on what the R380 Stumpy is and what it's all about, is basically 
It's a shortened bell housing version of a normal R380, and this fits directly in place of the original LT77, which would have been supplied with your original 2.5 TDI or 200 TDI Defender. Now, the LT77 was a bit more old fashioned and not as strong as the R380, so that's why we upgrade it. Now, the R380 that's in the 300 TDI, obviously very similar to this from here to there, uh, can handle power quite well, 300 horsepower, no problem, just the same. However, the bell housing in the 300 TDI models is too long, so we always say, put the stump in, and then it gets your engine away from that front cross member, and it goes for a much more professional install. Um, you're not having to bodge things around, move things around. The gearboxes always stay in the same location. The transfer case stays in the same location. So no messing around with prop shafts or anything like that. Um, we like to make it as straightforward as possible, the kind of thing that you could maybe do in a weekend or, well, it'd be a long weekend, but. Right, so moving around to the goody bits, the, the exciting bits. So we've got, well, firstly, we've got our oil cooler. You see the oil cooler fittings there, AN10 fittings that's part of the oil cooler kit but nestled in front of it the important bit we've got the injector pump now that's obviously the bit that we get excited about um, by simply just having a good look at that injector pump I think you can see um, that they are the business so what I've done on this customer's engine I use the 603 filter housing with the banjo style fittings um, and I pressed on new nylon hoses onto the original fittings. Obviously, we've plated all the fittings, so everything looks like brand new. Um, we've got a new power steering pump. Uh, God, lots of effort's gone into this engine. And these engines, by the way, before they go out, um, they get tested on an engine run stand for like a number of hours. Uh, I'll put a clip of that in just to show you them being tested, but you know, for pressures, oil leaks, things like that. The kind of things that we just don't want the customer having to deal with when it, it gets there. You want to put it in and enjoy it. So moving a bit further around to the front, our cooling package. Right, so our cooling package is designed for 300 horsepower setups like this. Um, so we use, and this is no secret, a TD5 or Puma radiator and intercooler. We use these because you can get them all over the world. Nice, easy replacement if you need to, if something goes through. And also, with them being aluminium and quite modern solutions, they cool this quite adequately. Um, assuming that you've got the right air intake, uh, supplying the actual engine with cool air and you're not sucking hot air out of the engine, and a few other factors, this works very well, especially with our large oil cooler kit. And with the, with the cooling package kit that we do, obviously the TD5 radiator and intercooler won't just simply fit into a Defender chassis uh, in, into a Defender body. So we make these plates, which are all nicely folded aluminium, which allows you to bolt them to the wings in standard location, bolt locations, and be able to drop these intercooler and radiators straight in. We have the hoses made. Um, so again, you're not having to cobble hoses together with bits of like bends and pipes and all sorts. It's a, it's a pre-made hose. Um, and the intercooler pipes, obviously, we make those in house also. They're aluminium, TIG welded, uh, and then a nice crackle finish on there. So everything kind of goes together just as a nice, easy package. The other thing that I'll mention about the radiator as well, using traditional TD5 and Puma parts, um, it means that if you were to want to upgrade that intercooler at a later date, if you really wanted to push hard, not a problem you can literally go to companies like, well, there's lots of companies out there, isn't there? Ali Sport and other people like that. I don't sort of condone their products, uh, not condone their products, I don't promote their products, I don't sell their products, but they look to be very nicely welded products. Um, and they do large intercooler solutions, large radiator solutions, and they will all fit with these brackets because these brackets mimic what a TD5 should be. However, I would say, 
give those a try first. I've had really good results with them. Right, so I think that pretty much concludes it. Like, if, like I was mentioning, if you want some parts like this for your Defender, not a problem, give us a shout. I'm sure we can give you a list. If you want an engine, it may be possible, um, but engines are quite thin on the ground. These packages quite often go to USA and places like that. I know the engines are available there, but you never know. It's always worth an ask. Sometimes we can get hold of them, uh, and sometimes I've got the availability to build them for you. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed my little educational video for you today. It's been Land Rover related, and uh, have a nice rest of your week. <laughs>